All right, guys. Hopefully, I can catch this without a lot of traffic. Wanted to catch a frequently asked question slash informative video. How do you buy equipment without getting the shaft? Literally, so many things can go wrong with an equipment purchase, legality-wise, because of the fact they're really not sold with titles in most cases. Both of these units, crazily enough, are headed to the same customer, transporting out to West Virginia today. So, a little bit of a video. You can see they got the right equipment for the haul, headed that direction. So, gonna work out pretty good. Anyway, how do you buy equipment? I'll get where it's not so noisy. How do you buy equipment without getting in trouble? That piece of equipment right there, we know the customer that bought it new. He paid cash for it. He did not have a lien. That doesn't always happen. So what if you go to his house and he's got a great deal on that Bobcat and you go to buy it? Unfortunately, depending on how the lien is recorded, if you buy it, give him the money, the bank is still owed, they can come repo it from you. And you are out the money. I know that sounds terrible. With a car, it doesn't really happen that way because of the fact you have a title or you don't have a title. Red flag, green flag. You know what's gonna happen. Not as easy in the situation of a piece of equipment. The other thing is theft is a big deal on equipment. Equipment gets stolen all the time. We've had a very close friend and we've had probably 12 customers with the same horror story of Facebook or Craigslist, bought a piece of equipment, once again, too good to be true deal. Oh my gosh, I got the smoke in this deal on this Kubota tractor. I got the smoke in this deal on this log chipper, spreader, whatever. I went and bought it. And then a month later, lo and behold, the sheriff comes knocking on their door and takes it away. Guess who's out the money? You are. The crook is gone. He's not going to respond. You're not going to have any correspondence and you're out your money. It's gone. It's just literally out of your hands. And that is super duper unfortunate. Now, how can you safeguard yourself? One, you buy from somewhere reputable, like a tractor dealer or like ourselves. You won't find many dealers that do what we do with equipment because it's a very touchy situation. This piece right here, another Bobcat. We bought it from the trade-in dealer that verified it was paid for. Um, it's super hard to track. There's something called uh, ACC or UCC filing. Uh, my mom in the office, Gail, handles that. And she has a way to process and check it, but that's still not foolproof. That doesn't necessarily show the previous owner, the prior owner, the proper owner, and it is not foolproof, but it is another way that there are liens held on items. So you have to be cautious. You have to be extremely knowledgeable, thrifty, pay attention, and only buy from people that you know, if you wanna make sure that you're not gonna have a problem. Um, what if you get something and it turns up stolen? They're gonna take it from you. You're not gonna get your money back and it's gone. Simple as that, like it's out of your hair. Jet skis, boats have titles. ATVs are a similar situation while we're standing here. Some ATVs have titles, some do not. Some have a certificate of origin, um, so a CO we call it, and that's better than nothing. Um, most people don't register an ATV because you can't ride it on the road, but you can take that CO and turn it into an actual title with your name on it. This EO would normally be the certificate of origin for when it was new, transferred from the original dealer, transferred to the first owner, and then if it changes hands three or four times, I have a CO in my safe for a Banshee that I bought 20 years ago. I bought it from the original owner. He never did anything with it. You know, he bought it, he sold it, I got the CO, so I feel very comfortable. Um, but another thing that gets bought all the time are ATVs, dirt bikes, a motorcycle for the street is gonna have a title. So you don't have to worry about that but so much. But uh, just things to think about, guys. Trailers have a title. Heck, tow trucks not only typically have a title to the truck, 
A lot of times they have a title to the bed because of the fact that that's a forty or fifty thousand dollar add-on in some cases. So make sure you have it. Uh, you'll see us have a lot of Kubotas. You'll see us have a lot of John Deere's. You'll see us have a lot of other manufacturers. But most of the time, they're the same manufacturers because we try to deal with reputable places that are trading in reputable units. It's all on bill of sale and documentation. And just like these two pieces that we're selling that are going to the new owner, they're gonna have a bill of sale. Ownership is clear. If anything were to come up, customer can come back to us and we can go back further. Hopefully that never happens. I don't see why it would ever happen, but at least buying from a dealership, you have a little bit of recourse. Now again, you know, a tractor like this isn't super valuable, but it's a heck of a workhorse and it will be for sale soon. So if you guys are watching this, this video, this will be for sale eventually. Um, but it's a, it's, you know, it's a great piece of equipment. Also was originally owned, did have a loan on it, but of course was paid off many, many years ago. And we were able to trade it in from the Kubota dealer where he got a brand new Kubota. So, um, always history with everything. You can see he's loading up the second one now. Make sure you watch that history. Make sure you pay attention and make sure you don't get yourself in a bind. Again, with vehicles, there's titles, boats, there's titles, trailers, motorcycles, most ATVs, but with equipment, sometimes there is a CO. I think we've got a couple. We buy new Kubota items because we love Kubota. Not a pitch for them. They don't pay me for anything, but we do utilize their equipment. My dad started buying it 20 years ago and has tried every manufacturer there was. He loved Kubota. They did good for him. Uh, they've done good for us. Um, John Deere's also been good. You know, even the Chinese brands like you just saw in the showroom. Sorry, I don't mean to be walking around aimlessly, but I'm currently looking for a particular utility truck that a customer wants to come look at. And I have a feeling it is. <laughs> there it is. All the way in the furthest back corner of the parking lot. Per usual, would not be an easy day if that wasn't the case. Um, but that is a frequently asked question. We get the call all the time. And I'm not saying if you buy from us, you don't have to buy from us. There's things that do pop up that are good deals. Make sure you do your due diligence. If you don't, shame on you. 30, 40, that excavator up there was $100,000. You can be out that money. Doesn't matter if you paid cash, paid check, put it on your credit card. If the cops show up, they're gonna take it from you and you are out the money. And unfortunately, we've had multiple customers that actually got caught in this situation that actually got felony charges against them because they were the person in possession of the stolen item. And if you wonder how bad that is, one of them's an avid sportsman and hunter. They even took his rights to own a gun. Uh, I guess that's part of having a felony. I don't know, thank goodness I don't. But uh, he is looked at as a felon on paper and he's one of the best guys in the world. Like he's never done anything wrong, but he bought a good deal at the time on Craigslist. Turned out it was stolen. So watch it, be careful. Not only could you be out money, you can also be out your rights. And uh, I'm sure that goes for most states. Again, every state is different. I have to say that we can only speak to Virginia, but I feel like most states are the same. Be careful, be cautious, get extremely good paperwork, and if you're buying a nice piece of equipment out of a sketchy area, you can almost be assured you're about to be in a problem. So again, back to the golden rule. If anything is too good to be true, it absolutely is. Follow with your gut, guys. No, no deal is too good to be true. If it is, it's a problem. So thanks a lot. If you got any questions on that? Absolutely, as always, feel free to reach out to us for advice. We don't care if you're buying from us or not. We are here to answer questions. Um, it's just a service that we feel that we can offer. We cannot always give advice. We cannot give legal advice. But if you have a question, a situation, if you see one of our vehicles posted, I should say that too. People steal and pirate our pictures all the time. If you see a vehicle that you think is ours posted somewhere else for sale, not on our website, not on our Facebook pages, it is probably a scam and we would appreciate it if you alert us because we do not want unsuspecting people to be taken advantage of. And unfortunately we're posting 
two, three, four, five, six vehicles a day all over social media, and it's real easy to cut and paste a picture. So we want to know about it, guys. Please keep us informed. Davis Drives on YouTube, Davis Auto Sales in Richmond, Virginia. Thanks for watching.